Johnny Jones. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. And yourself? Doing great, Coach. Thank you very much for joining us here on The Takeover. I learned something new yesterday. Who was that? I did not know you and Eddie Nunez had been friends for so long. Yep. Oh, our uh, paths crossed uh, a long time ago. I was actually um, still the head coach at um, University of North Texas. He was working as a um, athletic uh, direct uh, assist, associate uh, deputy athletic director there at LSU at the time in charge of basketball and our paths crossed. And um, fortunately he was there when um, I went back as the head basketball coach at LSU. He and um, so our relationship has been there for quite some time. And for those, and I noticed after the press conference, you said hi to his wife and daughter. So you know the whole family, huh? Yep. No, I've been knowing the whole family. They are a really close knit group. And uh, we used to have a lot of events, uh, family events there uh, at LSU as well. And they were always participants and being around. So it gave me an opportunity to be around them and see them and to have an, uh, the ability to interact. And because of Eddie's role with basketball, he was the um, um, seaman, the, the um, uh, oversight and overseer of uh, the uh, men's basketball program. So it allowed us to spend a lot of time together, including uh, with his family. For those who don't know, including, including me, what kind of person is Eddie Nunez? Oh, Eddie's a terrific guy. He uh, has a tremendous pedigree. He was at the uh, University of Florida, uh, kind of where he really cut his teeth uh, with a guy by the name of Jeremy Foley, who's like top one of the top athletic directors in the country uh, when he was athletic director there at University of Florida. And Billy Donovan uh, was the head basketball coach uh, there at the time. And uh, so he's he's been around some tremendous people in, in, in programs uh, that would allow him to have a uh, uh, kind of have his vision, uh, learning kind of the ropes of, of things that needed to be done and was really eager uh, for the opportunity uh, that presented it, it, itself to him. And uh, so uh, Coach Martin, too, who used to be the head basketball coach, who's from Florida, uh, where he uh, kind of grew up, uh, he had an opportunity to be around him. Coach Martin, who used to coach there at uh, University of South Carolina, that's at uh, UMass now. So he's been around a lot of good basketball uh, minds and people and then having an opportunity to be around one of the greatest minds and in, in, in athletic directors in the country and Jeremy Foley, I thought uh, set him up well. So I was excited uh, when he had an opportunity to take the uh, rings there at LSU in the position that he did. And we knew each other, mm -hmm. but I did not understand the role uh, that he played and the impact that he had until I really got back to LSU as a head basketball coach. And he wasn't just around basketball. He wore many hats uh, in the program, which was prepared him uh, for the opportunity uh, that he has today because it wasn't just basketball. He had a hand in uh, from the basketball program, uh, football, uh, from the facilities to academics, he touched a little bit of everything uh, to fundraising. Uh, so in the position that he held, uh, the things that uh, uh, I thought that, that he was exposed to uh, there at LSU, having a chance to be involved in every phase as though that he was uh, an athletic director, they gave him an opportunity and I think has really prepared him uh, for, for the um, opportunities that he's getting right now. Uh, he he sh sh gave you a shout out while he was on on the, the stage. He saw you and and was surprised to see you. And then afterwards, I asked him to talk more about your relationship. And he said he would would give you a call and, and lean on you for some advice because he said you're you're a great friend and a good person. So what what does that mean to you? Oh, well, it, 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 it's wonderful because we had our time there uh, together there at LSU. I thought we had a really uh, good relationship and. Um, uh, enjoyed my time being around. I thought he did everything that he possibly could to try to help the program. Not everything got done, but I thought he had tremendous vision, understanding uh, from facilities, some of the things that could be done that could really enhance our program. Uh, and a lot of those things are in place, um, obviously, there now. But I thought he had the vision 
to try to get those things done because he loves, you know, loves the sports. He loved kids. And um, at the end of the day, and understand that we're all in this business because of the uh, student athletes uh, that are out there and giving them the best opportunity they can is really trying to put the coaches in the best position that he can to give them an opportunity to thrive and be successful at the end of the day. And from football to facilities to basketball to weight rooms, you name it, uh, had an idea how things uh, really uh, needed to be done and how it really needed to be shaped at the end of the day. And uh, after I left LSU, we still uh, remained and in, in really uh, uh, kept in touch um, at the end of the day uh, because – and the things I guess he'd be calling me for now – is uh, if you're looking for a place to stay or maybe where to, where to <laughs> well, eat, uh, right. because he he certainly uh, got the administrative uh, part down and and really don't won't be need to really pull on me from those. And he's got a tremendous uh, group of resources and coaches and people there at uh, University of uh, Houston. But at the end of the day, he knows that I'm here and 24/7 uh, is anything you need, anything I can assist or or help him with. Uh, just like I am with uh, Coach Sampson and those guys, because we're obviously right across the street. We've got a tremendous relationship, and uh, I'm really excited uh, for him. And I've always followed the programs over the air, but now it would give me an extra incentive uh, to keep my eye on uh, and what they're doing and how things are going. Last thing about this, and then we're going to ask you about TSU and the Fan Fest. Did you coach Ben Simmons at LSU? Uh, yes. Uh, the one season he was there, we mm -hmm. recruited him, brought him in. Uh, he played for us uh, that year and uh, uh, he had a tremendous year, really, for us and helped us. We led the league uh, for the most part uh, that year and in and, uh, and first place. And then my, one of the best players, best shooter, uh, Keith Hornsby, was injured. And he missed 13 games that year, but obviously he missed, I think, the last six games, which hurt us. And we you know, came and had the second think maybe a best record uh, in the uh, deal uh, behind uh, Kentucky and um, I think. Uh oh, coach just froze like I had froze before. Let's see if we can get him back here. See Tran talking about Ben yeah, Simmons. And then five. There you go. Oh. I hope Coach come back because I want to ask him about new signee that he has as well as TSU's Fan Fest this Saturday afternoon starting at 4 o'clock inside the H&PE Arena. This will be the second year of the Fan Fest. Had some some technical, some Wi-Fi glitches impacted me start the show and not so like it's impacted Coach Jones. So hopefully we'll get that back and he'll join us. But here's some info about the young man. Kavion McLean, 5'10", five, five, senior guard. Let's try to be back here. Coach, you back now? Yeah. There we go. Yes, can you All hear right. me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep, I got you. But, no, Ben had an incredible year for us, and, unfortunately, um, <clears throat> things have not happened. It's uh, easy for him there in the um, NBA. But, yes, I did. In the other side of um, – um, Eddie Nunez is that he's developed a tremendous relationship with all those guys. And I think that's one of the great things about him is his ability to connect uh, the dots, uh, form and develop and maintain relationships. And uh, one of his better guys that he has that with is Shaquille O'Neal, uh, one mm -hmm. of the most recognizable guys that ever played LSU. And their relationship has uh, continued to develop as well. So uh, look forward to him being able to do that. Coach, just talk about the Fan Fest this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, excited. Uh, couldn't be more excited. I think Coach Grange has done a tremendous job of, again, uh, trying to create uh, a situation for uh, bringing our fans in, our students in uh, at the beginning of the year so we can have an opportunity to mingle, uh, be a part of them, come and and uh, it's welcoming really all of our students, uh, student athletes, one back to campus. Uh, and this is going to play in well, especially with all the freshmen uh, that you have already on campus uh, right now that's going through uh, orientation uh, and, and, and for the band to be able to come out, all of our sports here. Uh, it's done, uh, something that we did last year, and I think it's uh, going to be tremendous. I think they've added an opportunity 
to add a few more things to it uh, as well. To make it for our fans who can come in the community and the uh, freshmen getting them acclimated to one campus and being around their student athletes as well. Coach, well, what are your thoughts on new signee? Was it KV on McLean? Yep. Yeah, well, Shucks, I think, you know, one of the things we, we lost a lot of guys last year and uh, obviously everybody's familiar with PJ Henry, the job that he's done over the years and being MVP of the conference tournament two years in a row and then um, graduated and leaving, just uh, going to leave a void for us. And that's the place we got to recover and something we had to really focus on. And uh, Kavion is one of those guys we feel like that we've brought in, he's signed, and he's going to be uh, someone we feel that can help fill that void. And it's probably going to have to be done by committee, but he's uh, certainly going to be a great bright spot for us that our fans are going to really, really enjoy. And uh, we couldn't be uh, more excited uh, for the uh, having a chance to bring him in at the late date that we did mm -hmm. uh, with the impact we feel like that he's going to make on this basketball team and our program this year. <clears throat> <clears throat> last thing with you coach i saw this on tsu men's hoops instagram account the non-conference schedule you got a tough one again coach <laughs> so yeah I but mean, i tell you it's, it, 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 what i like about it though it gives us four home games um at the end of the day and and uh i couldn't be more excited about that that's something we usually don't have an opportunity to do those four other opportunities we, we're usually on the road so we're making some improvement. We're getting better. And when you look at that schedule, obviously we're at some tough places to play in Georgia and Georgia Tech and, and uh, what is it, uh, New Mexico uh, is another challenging spot. Xavier, probably a top 25 team. The other part of the schedule when we're at uh, Abilene Christian, uh, Sam Houston State, and at um, – uh, who is it, uh, Abilene Christian, uh, Sam Houston State. And uh, those teams are going to be returning games for us, and including Sanford would be coming back here next year, which are going to give us three additional home games, right? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've got four home games this year. We're going to road and play now. The following year, teams are going to be returning uh, games to us, which is going to give us a, our fan base an opportunity to see us early on instead of waiting until in January when conference starts, uh, and that's going to be their first time really having a chance to be in their seats and locking eyes on us. Now they've got an early um, opportunity to come out and watch their basketball team become familiar with the new guys uh, that we have. And so when conference play start, they're already warmed up and ready to go because they've had an opportunity to see us uh, doing a little bit of a phase prior to January 2nd, 3rd, or 4th, or whatever, generally when that normally happens. <clears throat> Then one last thing, Coach, what are your thoughts on the SWAC going to conference games where just the men and women play this together on Saturday and the men play by themselves on Monday, women by themselves on Thursday? Yep. Well, I think it uh, gives their fans a better opportunity to want to bring their kids uh, and make it more of a family event at the end of the day for us because when we play the double hitters, I think during the week, uh, depending on how long the uh, first game goes, it uh, puts us deep into the night and, and kids are getting out of here late and they've got school the next day. So I think it makes it a little bit tougher for fans or families who want to bring it out and make it more of a family event and a family uh, deal on Saturdays. Uh, you play the early game and I think then you can have the double hitter uh, because the games are played early enough and then families can decide what they want to do early on. And then we're getting uh, through early enough on Saturdays that if you've got couples or whoever want to go out and eat and have something else they want to do that evening, they are able to do that and be able to provide it that. So I think it's going to be uh, great for us um, at the end of the day and that's something we're going to really be excited about. And uh, I think it's really going to help uh, in terms of uh, maybe even our um, attendance uh, as well to where we may have lost some people because our games weren't starting at 730. It was close to 8 o'clock and getting out of here maybe closer to 10 or something that I think was um, kind of a uh, deterrent at the end of the day for some of the fans. But I uh, couldn't be more excited um, uh, to have that opportunity to be able to do that uh, during the week. And it's more traditional of what most teams around the country uh, are doing now. And, and what we're doing is pretty much falling in line 
with what most conferences uh, are doing. So I'm excited that our conference have taken another step to really try to enhance uh, our programs, our men and women's basketball programs uh, out there as well. Coach Johnny Jones, head coach of TSU men's basketball. Thank you as always for taking time to join me, coach. And I will try to be there Saturday afternoon at HMPE. Well, we're certainly looking uh, forward uh, to, to seeing you here and uh, really excited and really welcome and asking all of our fans to really come out and enjoy this uh, certain occasion uh, with us and meeting our new players and from all the sports and enjoying the band, the cheerleaders and the, the dancers and uh, just all the festivities uh, that will be going on on Saturday. And uh, I think it's a great way to kick off the uh, school year. Thank you, Coach. Take care. See you Saturday. Thank you. Go Tigers. Head Coach Johnny Jones, TSU men's basketball, just on a lot of things in his, his time here on the takeover. His friendship with Mr. Eddie Nunez, the new AD at Houston. TSU's new signee, KV on McLean. TSU's Fan Fest this Saturday, tipping off at 4 o'clock, as well as TSU's non-conference schedule. 